A failed terror attack in the heart of New York City Monday has law enforcement officials across the country on high alert. 27-year-old Akayad Ula has been charged with federal terrorism offenses after he detonated a homemade pipe bomb in an underground subway passage during the morning rush hour. The Bangladeshi immigrant telling investigators that he, quote, did it for the Islamic State. Mitt Silber served as the director of intelligence analysis for the New York City Police Department. Welcome. And I'm really glad to have you here because you predicted this would happen 15 years ago. I think I can give you credit for that. You were saying you did a paper called the radicalization, homegrown radicalization here. And we've seen in the last 15 months in New York alone, three cases uh, like that. What, what's going on? You know, Paul, we, it's unfortunate sometimes when you're uh, a Cassandra and you're, you're correct. Um, you know, we spent a lot of time looking at the trends in Europe um, in 2004, 2005, seeing how the threat was changing. And based on what we were learning in New York City from investigations, we realized, you know what? The trends in New York aren't that different. We're just a little bit further behind. Really? And unfortunately, and that was really the purpose of the report at the time, to ring the bell and say, hey, wait a second. Sure, uh, Muslim immigrants to the United States integrate much better here than in West in Europe, that's part of the American dream, the American story. We're a melting pot. Right. But that doesn't mean that they are immune to radicalization, and we should be concerned because that's a story coming here. Well, if you look at the trends in New York after 9 11, of course, that horrific attack, you got the NYPD and the FBI, you, you, you found a few, you stopped a couple of attacks, but there's a long period right. where there really weren't any. There was the one guy in Times Square who tried to explode a car bomb and failed, but there weren't a lot of other attacks. Attempts. Now, in the last 15 months, we've had three. Yeah. So uh, is this just a coincidence, do you think, or is this, this is the kind of thing we're going to see more often? Yeah, it, it's, it's a question that I think is now appropriate to begin to ask. I mean, when, we, when you think about from 9-11 to 2016, you know, 2017, you essentially went 16 years right. without a successful attack in New York City. And if you're a bad guy looking at New York City, New York City looks invulnerable. It looks invincible. There is this right. shield around the city. You know, on October 31st, unfortunately, that shield was pierced. And now it was demonstrated that, yes, an attack can be carried out in New York City. And now we have, you know, less than six weeks later, a second attack and, frankly, our first suicide bomber in right. New York City. Because that's so what he was attempting to do. It's just that he, he was so incompetent and we got lucky. We got very lucky. It was only the fact that he wasn't a good electrician and he couldn't actually make it work. Otherwise, there was nothing to stop him from exploding uh, a few blocks from here. All right. So is the NYPD, as you observe it, uh, doing something differently now than it did in the past? Look, I think, you know, there's a political question that has to be asked. You know, when Mayor de Blasio ran for mayor, essentially he ran to some degree against the NYPD. That was really who he positioned himself against. And shortly after coming into office, a lot of uh, media attention was garnered because they issued a press release when they shut down a unit called the demographics unit. Right. I don't know how many times in the history of the NYPD that when a unit of half a dozen people was shut down, it justified a press release. Now, what did that demographics unit do and why was it important? You know, it did a few different things, Paul. You know, one of the things that New York City learned from 1993 when, you know, former police commissioner Ray Kelly was the commissioner, you know, at that point was that, you know what, you need to understand where people from other countries might come and lay low before they launch an attack, i.e. before the 1993 World Trade Center attack, that they might be in places in Jersey City. Where do they um, hang out? Who, where, do, where do they get a meal? Where do they stay? Where do they, what mosques do they go to? Yeah, where, 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 do they, where are you likely to find people who are their co-countrymen, you know, where right. they might stay to lay low? Um, and, you know, think about it. Uh, you know, when the attack happened at the Boston Marathon, right. we're talking about two individuals of essentially Chechen background. In New York City, we had to ask the question, where would these guys go if they were to come to New York City? And that increases your chances of, of getting a tip, getting some information, preempting something as opposed to afterwards trying to, to repiece, uh, you know, put together what happened. 
Right. We would have been positioned well in Brooklyn to detect a car with Massachusetts license plates showing up to New York, as we now know they had thought about doing. Okay. Now, the, the, the NYPD would respond to that and say, look, we're not doing anything different. The demographic unit didn't matter that much. It really wouldn't have. We're, we're still get the surveillance we need. Uh, uh, how would you respond to that? Look, I'm, I'm no longer at the NYPD, right. so I don't know operationally what they're doing. People who I trust and I speak to say, look, we're working as hard as ever, and sure. if anything, the threat is more complicated because when you're dealing with singletons as opposed to a group, there's not as much of a signature to detect. You know, the, and, I, and I think that's a fair argument. Yeah, I, I think it is too. I mean, we're talking about people who radicalize online, and they're not, you know, they're not uh, meeting in a bookstore right. or in a mosque or someplace. But you know, the demographics unit had important purposes, and if the question is, you know, NYPD and the FBI said, hey, this guy, Mr. Ola, was not on our radar. Why was he not on the radar? That's the question that I think needs to be asked. You know, maybe everything was being done and he just sort of slipped through, but three people in 14 months, um, you know, this, this begins to be a question that's worthwhile thinking about. Yeah, I agree. All right, thank you, Mitchell. We appreciate your being here.